Welcome to the 10 Minute Teacher Podcast, hosted by author, educator, speaker, and mom, the cool cat teacher, Vicki Davis. Every weekday, Vicki and her guests will help you discover powerful, practical ways to be a more remarkable teacher today. In this episode, number 649, Vicki checks in with educator Dylan Huskin, Montana's Teacher of the Year. You'll find out how he uses the coronavirus homebound time to stay ahead of the learning curve, immersing himself in the latest distance education technology, and he has great ideas for all. We want to thank Advancement Courses for sponsoring this special content on education coronavirus response. Stay tuned at the end of the show to learn about their free micro course on online learning. Let's join Vicki and Dylan right now. Today we're talking with Dylan Huskin, 2019 Montana Teacher of the Year, who's been teaching social studies for more than a decade. So Dylan, you've been impacted by the coronavirus and the COVID-19 closures. Tell us about what's going on in Montana. Well, uh, Montana was one of the last states to have a confirmed case of coronavirus via testing. And our governor just last week announced that we'd be closed for two weeks. That just happened to coincide with the spring break that a lot of students in my county were on. And so teachers, even though they were on spring break, were quick to scramble and think on their feet. I mean, that's what teaching is half the time anyways, is thinking on your feet. And I'm just so impressed with how Montana teachers have really just put their minds to the task of figuring out how they're going to educate and connect their students, even though school is going to be closed. Now, when you started seeing things happening, what have you done to connect with your students, even though it's like you said, it's spring break? So I called every student in my homeroom just to see how they were doing, talk with their parents as well, talk to them about the next steps our school was trying to take. One of the key components there was delivery of meals, both breakfast and lunch, if that's something they wanted, but also thinking about how we're going to continue their learning, even though school's closed. So our leadership, our paraprofessionals, our lunch ladies, they've done a fantastic job getting stuff ready for students. And uh, just talking with students, uh, they're eager to learn. They want to learn, even though they're not in school, and they're eager to uh, try this kind of revolutionary thing we're doing, which is teaching without um, a classroom. You know, there's so many debates going through education with all of this, but is it better to connect with those you can connect with than nobody? I think so. I mean, that's the big struggle right now is figuring out how to do this equitably. We don't want to leave our most vulnerable students in the dust because they don't have internet capability or internet connections. So that is a big question mark that leadership on the state level, on the district level, but also just teachers on an individual level really have to think about and kind of grapple with. But for students who want to learn online and are eager to connect, I think it's better than not connecting with them at all online. We should really figure out how we can move in that direction so that students who want to continue learning and turn this learn from home situation as an opportunity to grow in ways maybe they're not used to growing or pushing themselves in ways they're maybe not used to pushing themselves. This is our chance to rethink everything. And uh, we'd be remiss not to do that and to just go with the status quo. How do we help the kids, you know, handle the stress? I mean, our school closed uh, on a Friday you know, walked out of school. And then we actually walked in school on Monday online in our online school with more kids than we had on Friday. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's been a blessing. Um, My headmaster called me in way before and, and had me create a game plan. And it wasn't even on my radar. I mean, that's visionary leadership. But it's hard. And a lot of times when people are upset, they're not really upset at the school. They're just upset about what we're dealing with. How do we step back and look at the big picture here? Because, you know, there's some teachers who are stressed about coverage. I mean, at this point, Dylan, are you stressed about covering the whole book and what you usually cover every year? Yeah, I have um, some deep ambivalence about all of that. I constantly am thinking about what I wasn't able to cover in a regular school year. And I've just kind of had to let that go and be like, you know, my students aren't going to learn about the Civil War in the ways I was hoping that they could. But I just got to figure out how to do it differently. So I've let that go. It definitely haunted me for a little bit there. But uh, this is really just about trying to connect with students. We definitely have to let go of the idea of kind of um, academics and grades, um, but really hold tight to the idea of growth. So really trying to connect with students to see, despite these crazy times, are they growing? 
Are they finding opportunities to push themselves in ways that are appropriate? We certainly don't want to stress kids out. This time is stressful enough. I think providing really relevant lessons is key right now. Like I know of some family and consumer science teachers that are having their students take a before and after picture of their pantry and having them organize their parents' uh, pantry at home. Just stuff like that where we can really give a relevant lesson to students in ways that doesn't add to the stress or make them worried about the situation. We're supposed to be, as teachers, a strong presence in our students' lives in a very reassuring manner. And uh, this is our opportunity to really step up to that. Are there any other typical things that we think about that we need to let go of or adjust in this time? Because, you know, there there are a lot of great teachers out there, but we, we have to think differently about everything that we're doing right now. Yeah, we really do. I can't imagine what it is like for our high school seniors. Uh, I teach eighth graders, and they're going to miss out on a lot of of end-of-year celebrations and opportunities. I work in a K-8 school, so a lot of these eighth graders, they've been here nine years, and all the cumulative stuff we do to celebrate their passage might not happen now. And so that is something that we may have to really wrestle with Um, in terms of letting other things go. I don't know what we should let go in particular, but I do know we need to be very open-minded and very flexible and resilient as teachers, because I think our students will see that if we can model that to them, it's more likely that they can try to channel that as well. Well, I have a high school senior and a college senior, and we are going to have to think differently when we get through this about how we can help them celebrate with whatever state we're in when we get through. Because they're worthy of celebration. I mean, this is a class of 2020, and we hope we can see clearly what's important. That's what I hope we come through this with, is we clearly see what's important in life. And I'm not so sure that it's our mile-long list in overstuffed calendars. Right, right. I mean, I love your point. We can't just be like, well, it's not happening now. we got to be really creative in how we're going to celebrate this generation that really deserves celebration, because they're really going to remember how we responded and how we worked our butts off to still lift them up. How has this changed you? Um, It's really gotten me to kind of re-immerse myself in staying ahead of the learning curve, technologically speaking, learning all the new technologies, all the uh, methods for bringing in technology into the classroom. I've always tried to keep up on that, but always felt like I was falling behind. This is really my chance to catch up. Just the self-education I did over my spring break has just blown my mind and really opened my eyes to the stuff I've been missing. Yeah. The silver lining is I am grateful for the opportunity to really grow myself as a teacher and change and think outside of the box. And then as a historian, because I love teaching history, this has really re-motivated me to really teach my students why history is important and why history matters. It really gives us a strong way of handling crises like this. It gives us good perspective. And it just makes us clear and ordered thinkers. And I think we really need that right now in our society. Fill in the blank as we finish up. After we're through the coronavirus crisis, I hope we don't blank. Go back to the way we used to do it. And what's that? Uh, You know, however we've been doing education where we've been heavily leaning on, they have to be in the four walls of our classroom to learn and they need that face-to-face time. I'm not saying those things aren't important. There's a huge social aspect that I think is beneficiary there. But this is our chance to really take our teaching to the next level. The way we organize our classrooms, structure lessons. And I'm hoping that this gives us times as teachers to really beef up how we do differentiation and enrichment and extension activities. This is our chance to just really branch out in the way we structure our lessons and the way we provide learning opportunities. Great points. And, you know, I want to say I hate the term social distancing because we're not really socially distancing. We're really physically distancing. Yeah. For me, with my school and all the Zooms, I mean, I've been in homes and been talking, you know, in the homes of my Sunday school class. I've been in the homes of my colleagues, my principal. I mean, he was grilling today and we were having a staff meeting. So, you know, it's changed us in very um, different ways socially. So I feel more socially connected, even if I'm physically distant. And I hope that's what we come out of this, that we truly build some relationships. Yeah, I, I hope so too. I mean, it's made me appreciative of the relationships I've built over the school year with my students and knowing that because I've built up routines and rapport with them, that we can smoothly transition into this next uncharted territory. 
Well, educators, we've got a lot of great points here from Dylan that we need to let go. We need to be flexible and resilient. Let go of that coverage mentality. Focus on what's important. Ask yourself after this is done, how do I want things to be different? So Dylan, these are unusual times and I hope you continue to speak out for the excellence in education and Good luck up there as you guys look at at what's next for Montana. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me on. I really appreciate the opportunity. And kudos to all the teachers who are just revolutionizing the way they do everything. I've seen a lot of great change already. I'm just so impressed with this profession and the lovely people that fill it. Thanks, Dylan. Thank you. Advancement Courses offers a free micro course, and Vicki Davis suggests that you take advantage of it. It's called Launching Online Learning. If you go to coolcatteacher.com slash online learning to register, you'll get this free, valuable micro course from Advancement Courses. Now is the time we all need to educate ourselves on effective online teaching, and Vicki recommends this course as a great place to start. Thank you, Advancement Courses, for sponsoring this show on such an important topic. And we'll see you next time.